Fuzzy Kicks, happy Christmas. Hope you all had a fantastic day with friends and family. Nice to see everybody posting all their pictures of all the cars and kits they got on uh, the RC Kicks Facebook page. It was really good. I uh, managed to pick myself up another little car that's winging its way now. So that'll be on the channel soon. Right, so we're back cracking on finally with the XLS Schumacher that I have wanted to get my hands on for ages, but it's been slowly working its way up the build list. Now, the strange thing about this kit is very early on you jump straight into bolting into the under tray. So I've already cut out the under tray, sanded it, ready to go, because basically on page two you're already bolting straight into this, which is very, very different to all other cars that I've known over the years. So I wanted to get this one out of the way so that we can just crack on and start building it. Um, I haven't decided whether I'll paint it or not, probably not. I think I'll just leave it as it is um, from that point of view. And then if I change my mind later on, I can always buy another one and then swap it out. Right, let's get it all unpacked, lay it all out, and then we can see what we got. I'll be right back. I picked up some MCI decals as the reread stickers are different. I also acquired some silver rims as it makes the car pop a bit more. The tyres that come with the kit are obviously mud tyres, so I've acquired some road tarmac tyres from Schumacher and I'll use the original black rims so I can swap between mud tyres and road tyres. I also purchased an aftermarket set of stainless steel screws. At some point I'd like to get a carbon chassis for the car, but it depends on whether I'm going to drive it or it's going to sit on the shelf. Now I've laid out all the kit and I've had a good look at all the bags and in the Schumacher world they do it bag by bag so you have like bag step one, step two, step three and each one is in its individual little bag. Then you just follow the manual and it gives it step one, it's step ba one bag, step two and so on and so forth. The only other thing I've purchased um, replacement screws and bolts. Um, I don't know from my own personal experience, but a lot of people comment that it's better to buy aftermarket, better quality bolts and screws. So that's what I've done. So I've got one tub full of all the screws required and I'll put all the screws that I take out and swap out into another one. So that's the only difference. I'll let you know at the end of the build whether I thought that was worth it or not worth it, but I'm just taking everybody's advice because I just don't know. Right, step one is the chassis, and then we start with bag one. Unfortunately, the replacement screws that I purchased were predominantly flat-ended screws. I'm not a big fan of flat-ended because the screwdriver that you use, when it slips, it usually stabs you in the finger and cuts you. Um, I don't have a great deal of flat-ended screwdrivers, most of mine are Phillips. So I kind of pick and choose which one I was going to use. So in this kit, some of them were from the aftermarket screws and some I used for the original screws. The aftermarket screws were better, but the original screws that were with the kit, in my opinion, were okay. There was no real issues with them. The first thing I found quite strange was the battery straps had a holding screw that was from the bottom and not the top. So if you wanted to tighten the battery straps, you had to do it from below. Later on, I modified the under tray and drilled two holes in them so I could loosen and tighten them. But it would have been and made more sense if you loosened and tightened them from the top. So there you go, that's stage one, page one. Uh, no, it's page two, step one and two. So it's the aerial and the battery tray. We now move on to page four, step four. So that's this. So let's take a look and see. And then instantly we're straight into the tray already. Let's have a look, see what we got here. Now I've seen that you can get metal versions of this part, but as this will only get a bit of light running, I can't see it making much difference. I don't plan on running this one that hard at all. 
um, to be quite honest with you, unless I really, really get into this car and then I will look at upgrading the parts as and when. One thing's for sure, you definitely don't want to be replacing the belt too often. As you can see, you put the belt in right at the beginning and it goes all the way through the whole car. Quite quickly on, you have to screw through the polycarbonate tray. They're so tough that you wouldn't be able to do it with a screw, so you've got to get your drill out. Don't take it as gospel that they all line up, so just do one and then use the chassis itself to give you the guide for the holes. One part I will be upgrading myself is the eccentric alloy part, U7245. This is a real precision part and it's what you use to change the tension on the rear belts. By this point I'd realised that this kit is going to be a bit of a pain trying to get everything to line up exactly right. Everything works, you've just got to fettle things slightly, which is very different to things like Hoyosho or Tamiya. Now we move on to step six, which is the rear drive line of the car. If you want to run some brushless power through this chassis, you're going to need to upgrade the transmission. Schumacher have done this for you and you can pick up part U7236 which is the pro transmission upgrade. Now it's not cheap, it's quite an expensive upgrade but if you want to put serious power through this car you're going to need it. Now this part is really important so you've got to make sure everything runs nice and smooth no catching, no rubbing, everything moves freely. Now we move into step 7, page 6, fitting part U7178. Now these uh, balls will fall right the way through the hole, so be very careful. Don't just put them all in and then pick up the part, otherwise they'll just drop all over the place. Not that that happened to me at all. <clears throat> There's no spare ones, so go easy. So there you go, that's page seven, um, step seven and eight. No, step seven. Um, there is quite a bit of movement in there and the bearing didn't sit too well either. So it's a bit, mm, but I have seen other people have had the same sort of issue. So I'll just keep going with it. All looks a bit flimsy at the moment, but I guess it will come together. Now we move on to step eight. Since you have to use super glue to basically attach the fences, it's best to look through the manual two or three pages and find all the things that you've got to glue up and glue them up all at one time. Not just glue one thing up, then wait for it to dry, then carry on, then to find that you have something else that you've got to glue, so then you've got to wait again. So there you go, that's step nine. Um, that was fine, there was nothing super special about that. That was kind of what you would expect. Step 10. Step 10. Now you better find a knack for these because there's a lot of them in this kit and they're a right pain. The best thing I could come up with is to use a set of pliers to put the first pit section in, then later on when you need to connect it to the other side, use the supply tool and then leverage it and push it down. Good luck! 
it's going to be a pain in the backside and your fingers are going to hurt. When it comes to step 10, page 8, to put the drive shaft bits in, use one of these, don't waste your time with that and then you just hold it but it's got to be a pliers that will actually go inside the joint and then you just rotate it in and that works little tip that seems to be better oh that was fun moving swiftly on now we move to step 10 where we have to attach the joints use the same assembly procedure as shown on page 8 push it in as far as you can on one side then you put the spudger in and then you push that was a bit different but it seems to work all right now I'm hoping that when I put this in here it settles the car down a little bit step turns down step 11 so do I move on to a different bag set now Don't stress too much about the belts being loose and things being a little bit flimsy. Later on you get to adjust the belt tension and it all comes together great in the end. So don't stress about it, just plod on through. There's some really tiny screws that hold this plate on and I was a bit concerned that they just weren't, be, weren't man enough to be able to hold it. But they seem to be fine and I understand because they don't need to go all the way through the metal otherwise they might snag on some of the drive line. So we've done that. I don't know how you adjust it. The belts look quite loose. So that I don't know. But we'll get to it. Now we move on. Page 11, step 13. Okay, so 13 doesn't involve a bag, it's just this part here. So basically, what we do is we attach, no, that can't be right, it must go underneath. Like so. So it's now asking me to go and cut this out. Okay, so next I We'll cut this out. Now on my cover, it had no lines for the anti-roll bar um, spacing. So when I cut it out, I didn't actually make allowances for that. Later on, I realized that this part does snag the front anti-roll bar and you have to cut into it. Um, I found using a file was the best way to get the nice rounded edges because you need a very thin section to go in where the uh, front anti-roll bar sticks out. For some bonkers reason you actually have to solder the ball joints onto the ends of the front anti-roll bar. I didn't bother filming this because my soldering is tragic and I don't think anyone should witness that. So we got to page 13 and basically it's redoing the front diff. So I've done the front diff off camera because it's no different to the rear one really. So I didn't want to just record another 25 minutes doing the same thing. One other thing is with this kit, everybody says before you fit the top deck, you should fit the uh, steering because it makes life much easier. So off camera, I've gone back and I fitted the steering. I don't know if you can see that. 
So it's actually quite easy to do if you do it with the top plate off. So that is page 38, step 42 and 43. So I've taken everyone's advice and I've done the same thing and I fitted it. I can kind of see why it would be a bit of a pain trying to get all the bolts in and stuff. So I've done that. So next, we're basically moving on to page 14 where we fit the drive shafts to the front section. So we're on step 18. Luckily, you can adjust the tension on these uh, without having to remove the drive shaft knuckles. Thank God, as you wouldn't want to do this more than once. It does take a lot longer. I've edited this down, so uh, bear with it. It doesn't take two seconds. As you get the knack for it, you get faster and it's quicker. But the first few can be a right pain. If you're thinking of running this car, I would recommend upgrading the alloy front transmission housing part 7293 as it will make your life a little bit easier than over the stock plastic one. By now I'd started to realise that this build was going to be a little bit more of a pain in the backside. Your fingers start to hurt a little bit and after building some other kits you, you kind of get a bit annoyed that things don't line up quite right and you've got to fettle them and it's taking a long time. But stick with it, the final kit when you come out at the end is really good. So that's done, Bend the chassis out of the way. Now we move on to 19. Oh, look, there's a bumper involved. We don't need these. This is where I had loads of problems. The front section is a sandwich construction and there's four main bolts that feed through that hold everything tight together. And then you loosen the four bolts off and then you pull the front diff forward to get the tension on the main drive belt. Now I had loads of trouble getting the five parts that all need to line up perfectly to push these four main bolts through. So uh, yeah, make sure you make your polycarbonate holes a reasonable size and you've just got to plow on through and keep getting it there. The bolts are really long as well, so it takes ages to screw them through. Um, but yeah, we get there in the end. My main drive belt didn't run true when I first started to rotate the belt after I fitted the front diff, but I found loosening off the four bolts and then pulling on the front diff and adjusting in the direction that you want the belt to move fixed that problem. Oh my God, finally. Oh, getting those four bolts through there was a right pain. Um, I should have gone slightly bigger on the, the um, screw holes for the uh, polycarbonate. That took ages. There's not much margin for error there. Whew, that was a couple of long hours fighting with the car to get to this point. But now's a good time, I think, to pause the video, go over what we did, and then set us up for the next video. So we basically did all the rear gearbox, all the front diff, got all the drive line in. So that's great. I had loads of trouble with the front four bolts going all the way through because it's a sandwich construction and I drilled the holes too small on the polycarbonate body and it's very strong. So I was fighting that for quite a while to get the bumper on and sandwich up the front diff. Whew. On the next video, we put the arms in, get the diffs, um, drive shafts in drive shafts are a bit of a pain but hey we'll get to that and then get all the hubs done again another fun project and get the wheels on and get it to the point you see it now <sighs> yes it's been a long video don't let me put put you off because yes it might be hard to fight your way through this but once you get out the other end you end up with a fantastic buggy that is world class back in its day and is still a beautiful looking kit today
In the next video, we get the shocks done, we get the arms on, do the hubs, and uh, basically get it painted and finish it off. I'd like to get some electronics in this and I've got a few extra parts coming. I actually had some parts turn up today. I've got the rear uh, anti-roll bar, which is gonna go on. That's a, an option. And a few other little bits and pieces that are coming. I've also got some road tires that have just arrived. So I'm waiting for the uh, fronts and the sponges to turn up so I can run this on the road and not use these tires. In the next episode, we'll finish off the car and then what will be left is just to paint it. I'm gonna do it box art because it's just gorgeous and how can you not? Right, well, I hope to see you all over on the Facebook uh, RC Kicks page and thanks very much for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.